Uh, hi. So I, I work at the European uh, Bioinformatics Institute. Uh, so it's not far from here uh, in Hingston. More specifically, uh, I work at the group called Campbell, uh, which, is, which deals with cheminformatics. And today I will try to describe how we use Python language inside our group and what parts of software we open source and we provide uh, the, the software that can potentially be used uh, in a field of drug discovery. So uh, what's Campbell? So our group is responsible for uh, developing and maintaining the Campbell database. So the database uh, that uh, contains the small drug-like compounds, uh, most of which are manually extracted from uh, scientific literature. Uh, so the Campbell database uh, is uh, updated pretty frequently, so the current version is uh, 20. Uh, the, the, the schema is quite complicated because it, it has uh, 62 tables. Um, it's pretty large in terms of number of um, records inside because, for example, we have almost 1.5 million of distinct compounds, uh, more than 10,000 targets, uh, more than uh, 13 and a half million activities. Uh, this is all extracted for, from almost uh, 60,000 publications. So uh, in order to uh, manage this database, we've created a Django ORM model. Why? Uh, because uh, you don't have, to, when, you, when you are working in, uh, in a Python code, you don't have to inject raw SQL. And also, this is database agnostic. And uh, we use Oracle in production, but we use Postgres and MySQL elsewhere. So it's important for us. So we can write code once and execute against any other database engine. And also, it's uh, easier to, uh, to make schema changes. So when I make schema changes, I don't have uh, make a dramatic changes to the code. Um, and this Django RAM model is important uh, for us uh, to, uh, to share data with, with others. Uh, so there are two traditional ways how we, how we share data uh, in CAMP. The first one is FTP. So you go to the CAMP FTP website and you download uh, a SQL, uh, SQL dump. Uh, so we use, so as I said uh, previously, we are using Oracle uh, in production and we use Django to, to migrate data from Oracle to MySQL, from uh, Oracle to Postgres. And then uh, we, we take uh, those SQL dumps and put, it, put them on a, a FTP. The other way to, to get uh, camp data that is more web uh, developer friendly are web services. And obviously they're written in Python. Uh, they offer RESTful design. They are open source Apache, uh, licensed using Apache 2 license. They are available on GitHub and registered to Python package index so you can easily set up your own uh, mirror of the, of the web services. They not only provide data, but they also provide some chemical utilities. So um, here, this is how it looks in production. So we have one root URL, and if you say root URL slash utils, you have access to, uh, to the utils part. So here, the concept is that you, you provide some data, some compounds, uh, use these utilities uh, to, to do some, uh, some computation and get the results back. And when the data part is just basically retrieving data directly from Campbell. So when you, when you go to the root URL slash util slash docs, uh, you will see the live online documentation of this part. If you go to uh, the root URL slash, uh, slash data slash docs, you will get live on, uh, online documentation of the, of the data part. Uh, and the technologies we are using to, to provide those web services are, so I already mentioned Django and, uh, and Oracle. We are using uh, Unicorn as a, as a server, uh, application server. We use Apache to serve static files. We are planning to enhance web services with some uh, smart searching capabilities using Solar. We are using uh, RDKit and Indigo uh, cheminformatics toolkits for uh, rendering compound images. So you can, you can choose uh, which one you, you would like to use. Uh, TastyPy is used to uh, 
expose uh, data from, from Django to, as, a, as a RESTful API. We use Sentry to collect uh, error data, and MongoDB is used as a cache store. Uh, so having, having this, this data layer, having our database, having those uh, Chemium Informatics toolkits that have uh, Python bindings, we, we now uh, can provide a collection of notebooks uh, that explain how to, how to use this data, how to get some information from this data, how to leverage this data with various uh, difficulty levels that are open source avail and available on GitHub, obviously. So what are, what are the examples in, in those uh, notebooks? So the, the simple ones are how to retrieve data from CAMEL using raw SQL, using Django RAM, using uh, web services or a dedicated Python client. Uh, how to plot data uh, using D3.js via MPLD3 or matplotlib, uh, basic RDKit tutorial. I think now I should actually click on this because someone told me that uh, this is chemical presentation, so, so, sh so I should uh, show some compounds. So if we scroll down, yes, here they are. Now I have to switch back to the presentation. Yes, perfect. Uh, whoa, no, I didn't want to do this. Come on. Yes, uh, machine learning, uh, so uh, target prediction using uh, scikit-learn, scipy, numpy, and pandas, uh, data mining, for example, uh, uh, MDS, uh, exploring or data mining uh, as exploring uh, patent data that we uh, that is the available for free from our new project call, called Sure Campbell. Yeah, but uh, as many uh, presenters before already noticed, uh, it's hard uh, to um, to run such a notebook if it contains so many dependencies. So what we do is we we take Campbell data. Uh, database running on Postgres, uh, RDKit cartridge that allows to do substructure and similarity search on a database level. We take chemical toolkits, so RDKit and Indigo, some open source chemistry software, so for example, OSRA, so optical structure recognition. We take those no notebooks, web services, simple interface, and we put it all together, pre-configured, and load it into a single virtual machine that is called MyCampbell. So, MyCamble can, uh, um, can be fetched using Vagrant, uh, using this command if you would like to get a, a Linux uh, box based on Ubuntu, or this command if you would like to use the Linux box based on CentOS. Uh, and this is how the launchpad looks. So, uh, because the, the, the machine is headless, but once you load it, uh, you, you can go to localhost and see uh, this, this page which offers access to web interface, those notebooks, PHP admin console, uh, examples of integrating web services with NIME, web services, and the bigger part, so uh, some web utilities. So uh, we distribute MyCamp using FTP, so you can go to FTP and grab the disk image. Uh, you can use Vagrant, as I, as I said already. It's based on, uh, by default, it's based on Ubuntu, but you can fetch a CentOS-based version, and uh, you, can, you can download this uh, as a virtual disk image that is compatible with VirtualBox or uh, QML, KML uh, box alternatively, or as a Docker container, if you, if you prefer. Uh, there are other applications. I'm not sure how much time do I have. Not that much. So you can ask me about them. Uh, so uh, the, the, the one application that is um, uh, publicly available is called Admi Safari, and this is a tool for predicting and comparing uh, cross-species Admi targets. A curation interface, this is something that is not open sourced, uh, but you can, you can read another uh, presentation uh, uh, that I prepared. So this is for extracting uh, data from publications that uh, chemical curators are using so they don't have to deal with uh, raw SQL or database internals. They just drag and drop PDF to, to the browser and from the browser they can uh, curate the, the compounds and put them to, to a database. 
And we are working on some uh, NoSQL approaches using Neo4j and MongoDB, and new examples will be loaded to this collection of uh, IPython notebooks in the next releases of Campbell and MyCamp. So this is all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And we have time for a couple of questions. Any question? Uh, it's a very simple question, but uh, I'm actually very impressed by uh, what you achieved to do. And I was wondering how much time and how much manpower it took to uh, build all this framework and uh, to have it uh, working. Because uh, I know other facilities that could be interested in uh, having such large pro projects. So could you comment on the, the time that it takes? Uh, it depends on, on what, how, how do you define the framework. If you are, uh, if are, you are asking about uh, the ORM we, we provided, so the Django, Django model for, uh, 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 for the database. Uh, we we spent uh, almost a year because uh, not all the, all the features that are, uh, for, for example, Django didn't support at, at that moment when we, when we started all the um, camp specific data types. So we, we had to write some, uh, some things from scratch to add some missing functionality to Django and then write the, the model itself. Now, once we have it, it's, it's much easier. And so it saves time in the long term. But yes, it, this is indeed some investment of, of time. But it pays off. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes, you are able to access data and our software that we, that we use uh, internally in a group. We share almost everything, yes, so, so data and software. More questions? Then thank you so much. Thank you.